Thank you very much, Rajul, and uh, what, what a, a great thing to be here today. What a great honor to introduce uh, Kanayo Nwansa, uh, who's so well known and respected and loved by us all, uh, and especially by the two organizations that are co-hosting this event, IFPRI and CSIS. And I'd just like to recognize Kimberly Flowers, the director of the Global Food Security Project at CSIS. So, um, so I have the honor just to provide a few opening remarks uh, ahead of the, the main event, uh, which will be uh, Rajul and Kanayo talking about Kanayo's new book, A Bucket of Water. Uh, I just want to say, I mean, everybody here is going to know, of course, that, that Kanayo is the most recently the, the president of EFAD, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, and before then has had a very distinguished uh, career in the CG system, including a decade at the helm of Africa Rice Center during very formative times. The details are all in your, your program or online, but I really wanted to take my time to share from my perspective, you know, four of the messages from Kanayo, not just the book, but I think, you know, what I take from his, his career, I say career to date, uh, that have had the most uh, legs. And maybe, maybe it was Cheryl Morden who taught me that term, you know, what messages have have legs, what has, has had impact up to now, and what continues to kind of resonate for all of us in, in the field. So the first message, I think, is that uh, developing agriculture, developing food security, ensuring food security is central to African development. And at this point in time, that just seems like such a, of course, you know, and to all of us, you know, and I, I assume most of us here are, are Aggies, and we always thought that way. But I think Kanayo's great contribution was reaching beyond the circle of Aggies, especially to heads of state uh, and to other global donor organization, multilateral leaders. I mean, to get them on board with this is so important. You're not going to have economic transformation unless you develop your agriculture. So it's hard to think about it right now, but that, that was a radical idea. Uh, and it was a especially radical idea to get African heads of state saying it with frequency and investing in it. So, so Kanayo and, and IFAD, uh, thank you very much for your efforts on that. So that's one really core message. That especially helped in the recovery from the global food price crisis of 2007, 2008, uh, and getting, that, getting the, the investments up in agriculture and food security. Second key message, smallholders are at the center of agriculture. You know, and as we read the papers every day, or read the papers, gosh, I'm dating myself, as we look at the webcast and, and, uh, and, and have conversations, that message, that vision of inclusive economic development couldn't be more relevant uh, than it is today. Uh, so it's no good having agricultural development that only focuses or mainly focuses on, on commercial and large scale, large scale commercial. Smallholders have to be at, at the center of the vision. Um, so I think we also have Kanayo and IFAD, as well as many others, uh, to think, uh, thank you know, for making sure that smallholders, the focus on smallholders really became central to the SDGs, this, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals. So smallholders at the center of agriculture, agriculture at the center of economic transformation. The third message I take away is that it's not just about smallholders. It's about smallholder farming as a business. You know, again, you know, that's something that, that's become much more mainstream, but it didn't used to be, right? And it required a pretty radical re rethinking of development programs, of how do you equip smallholders, young women, young men, uh, smallholders especially nowadays, uh, to think about what, what are the things that you could do in agriculture uh, from the field level, from, uh, from the lab level uh, all the way through to food processing and marketing, but think of it as a business. You know, how is that different you know, from the way we've done programming uh, beforehand? So I think that, again, great contribution. Think about smallholders, but think about equipping smallholders to view and practice agriculture as, as a business. And I think, again, EFAD, was really one of the most, one of the, the first organizations, not the first to, to focus on gender, many have focused on gender, but to really try and operationalize the focus on gender uh, throughout its programming. And, and I see now my own work is beginning to focus much more on expanding employment and economic opportunities for youth 
And again, I look back to the seminal work that EFAB has done, you know, one of the really first ones to highlight the important role that youth play, you know, as an engine for economic development, as an important uh, element of, of how do you how do you work with this the demographic transition uh, that, that's going on the big bubble of youth and in, in a uh, in a very and, and, and equip them to be very productive members of, of society so if had really one of the the first organizations to focus more attention on youth and finally what I'd li like to say is that that the Kanayo has been instrumental in getting to African leaders and getting to donor leaders and urging us all to to get beyond the talk and say, what is the impact? What are you actually doing on the ground? What are the results that your programs and policies are having? How do we get better uh, at measuring? How do we get better at feeding our results back into our programming? That's really been transformational. I, I saw that kind of thinking influence the work at USAID uh, when I was there during the previous administration. It's also had quite an impact on, on thinking about how do you how do you improve impact and cost effectiveness of programs, not just at the project level, but how do you scale impact? And EFAD's uh, work in that area, how do you scale? What are the lessons from scaling uh, rural project interventions has been trickling through to, to USAID and other donors as we think about what are the lessons for agriculture and food security. So can I, I'm sure there are many more messages and we look forward to hearing from them. And I'd like to, uh, uh, to thank you uh, for your career to date uh, and invite uh, Rajul, uh, Chief of Staff, and Kanayo to the, to the dais here where we can continue our conversation about Kanayo's book. Thank you.